Of all the races in Teyvat, there is one type of race, or thing, that has always made me curious. And as a huge fan of a certain anime back in 2009, I am just fascinated by the thought of humunculi and puppets, and most of all, alchemy. Hey guys, what's up? Aru. And in the light of my recently ignited enthusiasm for Full Metal Alchemist, as well as a few puppets and homunculi this game has, I decided to discuss Scaramouche, Albedo, and the Shogun. The puppet Shogun, not Raiden. The individual goals and inspirations, and the paths they've chosen within the world of Teyvat, as well as a look into their hunger for the truths of Teyvat, and a bit of Ace's perspective regarding her puppets. As always, timestamps will be in the description and the comments for anyone who wants to go ahead into whatever they want to hear. But of course, I'll keep this video as cohesive as possible for you guys. To kick this video off, we'll be discussing the simplest form of humunculus and puppets that Teyvat has, which is the Raiden Shogun Puppet or Raiden Ace Exuvia. Now this puppet is the only known Exuvia that discloses its system in-game and was created by Raiden A herself to be her Kagemusha while she focuses on her pursuit of eternity which was then somewhat foiled by her actions in the story. So far it's the most human of all puppets and robots we've seen in the game but with more strict protocols. These protocols such as exercising force and aggressive action was made by A to keep the puppet from being swayed or to be negotiated with unless of course A herself intervenes. A whole sleuth of very strict and complex rules were placed to make the puppet as authoritative and undeniable as possible. Yet in contrast A is more lenient toward her people than her exuvia. This is to avoid discrepancies within Inazuma and as such only when the discrepancies are unavoidable or too much for the protocol it's been made to fulfill Fill, the real Raiden, which is A, would appear, or would then transfer you into her plane of euthemia. But the Shogun puppet is merely a tool for A to act for her and uphold her rule. A herself is actually somewhat of a puppet of Beelzebul or Makoto. Now A was once a Kagemusha for Makoto, and the word Kagemusha means shadow warrior, and that she would be the one to handle political affairs and conflicts within Inazuma. Raiden Makoto functions as the ceremonial representative but has more say in politics than A, similar to the Queen of England but now there's two of them. Her knowledge of creating puppets and the act of placing her consciousness wasn't from hers alone. She actually learned the ability to transfer her consciousness into objects from Yai Miko, or shall we say, the manifestation of the Kitsune Saigu, who said after we entered her plane of euthemia, and I quote, Miko, this was your doing? <sighs> now, now, don't forget who taught you how to place your consciousness in objects. This however does not make Yai completely knowledgeable in the creation of puppets or exuvias since the act of creating the exuvias or puppets and placing one's consciousness within them is different. So what puppet was made by Raiden A and does not have her consciousness inside it? Well, we met this certain specific example of such a self-conscious puppet in the ranks of the Fatui. Scaramouche The only character we have gameplay knowledge of a puppet that was created by the Shogun. The creation of Scaramouche was to attain the perfect vessel that A wishes to achieve, along with her pursuit of eternity. And as prototypes go, Scaramouche apparently did not fit the parameters A needed to be her vessel, and acted more as a proof of concept. That puppet was built with technology that has been lost to time. Perhaps she, as a god, is the only one privy to the knowledge of its origins. Still... There is one other thing on this topic that I suspect you may be curious to know. Before A began modifying her own godly form, she took it upon herself to create a prototype puppet. So, you mean there are three Raiden Shoguns? No. The prototype was merely a proof of concept. Its appearance and intellect were not based on A. It was a test. The original plan was for A to simply discard it. But perhaps A thought this to be too cruel, because in the end she chose only to seal the power within it. Later, this puppet wandered Inazuma as an ordinary human male with his own consciousness. Until the Fatui took an interest in him.
As to what exactly Scaramouche had that was of disinterest to A, we still have no knowledge of. But from the interesting personality traits from Scaramouche, we can find out his ability to act differently depending on the situation and exhibit his own emotions in-game. Emotions and personality switches that the puppet Raiden cannot do or is not able to do. I say personality switches because of a lack of a better word for lying and pretending to be a nice person. Remember when Mona saved us from Scaramouche because she sensed that he was a Fatui Harbinger and that he possessed immense power? Yep, I'm talking about that one. Scaramouche even attempted to quote-unquote dispatch Fischl in Liyue, mentioning that only the Millilith were present to stop him. He then issues commands with great authority and even scares one of his subordinates. A puppet inhibiting authority and imposing fear to people around him. Something that A would want for her puppet, no? But there is one thing she did not desire from Scaramouche, and that is to have his own personality. Which might take our questions about why Scaramouche was discarded in the first place. He did have the ability to assert authority and even scare or threaten others. But his ability to fake his personality, very akin to that of humans, would be very detrimental to A when it comes to keeping her precious Inazuma in check. If Scaramouche did something that wasn't lenient on the protocol set by A and lied about it after, it would hurt her status as the Shogun. Before you tell me, well, A can live inside Scaramouche and tell him what to do. And to that, I answer with, have you ever had your conscience tell you something but you yourself don't do it? Or at least even consider. It gives a whole new meaning to... <laughs> Quite literally, actually. So from this, we can disclose why Scaramouche was discarded and why he would join the Fatui. And his innate ability bestowed by Baal herself would easily earn him a place as the sixth Harbinger. In comparison, Lady Yai is the closest we know equaling Scaramouche's power level. And then quickly followed by Mona. So we can cross out questions regarding Scaramouche's power being equal to Baal herself. And honestly, who would put a 100% one-to-one copy of their full power into a puppet and then just discard it? Even if you put strict protocols or remove emotions, it would still be a bad idea. But it does beg the question though, what is Scaramouche after? And what does he intend to do with it? For that, let me transport you back into Mondstadt and within the shelter of the alchemy tables owned by the homunculus named Albedo. So Albedo is quite the anomaly among anomalies, but we can find out more about him in the Dragon Spine quest. Sadly, that's all we have to go on, and it is theorized, quote-unquote theorized, Albedo is actually a homunculus. And in theory, he is created from dust by his master, Rhine Dothir, which means daughter of the Rhine. His constellation is called Princeps Cretaceous, meaning Chalk Prince also hinting that he was created. Most of his dialogue also hints at him being some sort of creation, as well as the other snippets from our Dragon Spine quests about Albedo, his master Rindotir, and Durin the dragon. And this dragon's life force resonates with me. Not because it's a dragon, but because I am... me. Rhine daughter, master. Is this your creation? The giant dragon Durin? Hmm. Was the two of us meeting really a good thing? Albedo himself hints that he's a creation like Durin, or vice versa, Durin is a creation just like him. His whole physique also makes him look like a creation, pale skin, overly curious about humanity and life, and his eyes also resemble that of an alchemy table. Hopefully it's not the devs just being creative, and there's a whole plethora of reasons why he's theorized as a homunculus, but we'll keep this part short. So back on topic, Albedo did not actually have everything right away when he was created, or born if, you, if he's actually human, unlike Scaramouche. But the ability he did have was to create living organisms through alchemy. Now if he had this ability right away after creation or not, we can't say, but all his other abilities were gained because of his endless study and pursuit of truths, as requested by his master, Rindotir. And the search for truths, which was a journey that Lisa, yes the librarian of the Bonus Knights was humbled by after she obtained her vision. So to what point Albedo will go to before stopping? Honestly, I don't think he's going to. But he did warn himself, the Traveler and the whole of Mondstadt, about him losing control. Those born of Earth are bound by its imperfections. 
but those born of chalk are free of impurities. You and I are alike, both composed of a substance that has yet to be fully defined. If, one day, I lose control, destroy Mondstadt, destroy everything, can I rely on you to stop me? He knows that his endless search for the truth will one day lead him to his own destruction and collateral damage isn't too far from his reach as well. If you guys are still watching, here's where we can focus on the goals and power levels of our Hemonculus slash Exuvia puppet friends. Now comparing Albedo and Scaramouche for a bit, Scaramouche is also chasing the so-called truths of Tebat. The short time we had interacting with him in the Unreconciled Stars event says so. But Scaramouche's agenda is to go against Celestia, and that's if we follow the idea that his goals align with the Fatui. If not, then we're basically still in the dark. But I think that this reveals what A put into Scaramouche's protocol. Other than having a personality, she also put the pursuit of eternity, or maybe it's simply translated into the pursuit of truths. Something that I think shouldn't be combined with the rule of being aggressive, harsh, forceful, or assertive, and generally any form of anger, like she did with her Shogun Exuvia. And the amount of truths he assertively gained is quite a cause for alarm. His knowledge of the unknown is also apparent in the Unreconciled Stars event and even in the recent Inazuma arc. Although we could say the Fatui just rebooted his system, but I doubt they can match up to Raiden in that regard, since we don't know any Exuvias or puppets made by the Fatui just yet. So it's clear that Albedo and Scaramouche are after the same thing but do so in different ways. Scaramouche obtains the knowledge from the meteorite and a bit more after the 2.1 arc. Albedo is after something else, the origins of creation and his master's ideals, and is preparing himself for an internal outbreak he can't control. However, they are both pursuing the truths that Tevat is hiding, and both of them are quite privy in discussing such truths. Scaramouche's more egoistic nature hints to us small lines and tidbits of information while we talk to him. Meanwhile, Albedo only speaks to himself after our dialogue, so we technically don't know about his dilemma. But a question that pops into my mind is that do puppets gain more power within their vessel? Or how much power can their vessel take? Can Albedo only do paintings and is a genius or is admirable at being an alchemist? Is Karamusha's power limited by the vessel the Raiden A created? And the same can be said for Albedo. Did his master, Raindo Tyr, limit his ability as well? Albedo is a genius of Kimia, which is basically alchemy from Canria and is after the truths of creation. Scaramouche has innate Electro Archon abilities and is after the truths behind Tevet. Albeit in a smaller amount, but the power of an Archon being handed down to a puppet is nothing to scoff at. And although Albedo isn't versed in combat, his power to use Kimia could more or less defy the laws of Tevat, create beings from mere paintings, and altering items and objects. And we also have evidence of Albedo being more conscious of the amount of energy and power he is obtaining. Fearing his knowledge and abilities could cause a massive catastrophe. In contrast, Scaramouche doesn't really care if he destroys everything. Harbingers and the Fatui apparently all have the and justifies the means thing going on. When A was creating the puppet Shogun, she only put a slight amount of her Electro abilities into them, and the same could be said for Scaramouche. But the unlikely result that he ended up with the Fatui and having the Fatui unsealing his power basically made him Emperor Palpatine. The Fatui's knowledge and possession of lost technologies also benefits Scaramouche in his search for truths. But we don't know if these creations and technologies are on par with what Canria actually made. Albedo is probably weaker than Scaramouche in terms of power alone, but when it comes to knowledge and innate ability, Albedo has the upper hand. His unrivaled knowledge of the art of Kimia allows him to make the perfect or at least near perfect form of whatever lost technology he obtains. And his ominous premonitions of destruction could in theory beat any third-rate creations that the Fatui are mass-producing. So in summary, both Albedo and Scaramouche are in a race against time. How many crude creations for the Fatui and Scaramouche need to win, or how many experiments would it take for Albedo to make the perfect creation? An interesting quality versus quantity battle between the two inanimate objects. And as for who might win in this battle, I'll leave it to you guys to think about it.
all right thanks for watching the video up until the end i appreciate that there are actually people watching my video straight away right after posting and i also appreciate you guys for commenting and i most often heart your comments if you do sometimes i do reply if i have something worth saying but know that whenever i heart or like the comments it means that i am very thankful to you guys for commenting and as we all know comments likes and subs would help a lot in the youtube algorithm so keep commenting give out a like and click the sub button and the bell icon to stay updated on my videos i'll see you guys in the next video bye